All right, guys, before getting into today's video, I want to take a moment to let you know that I will be launching the merch line today on the channel officially. A lot of you have been asking me for this. A lot of you have been patiently waiting for me to finish it up, and I'm happy to announce that today is the day it's launching. So if you want to go support me directly, or if you're just a big fan of the channel, go check the store out. There is a lot on offer, more than you might think. So yeah, feel free to go do that. Again, it's a great way for you to support me as an independent content creator. It helps tremendously. So I just wanted to let you know that before getting into the video, but we do have some very significant PlayStation news to go over and discuss here today. Sony decided to reveal a lot of new information in a very short period of time. Frankly, I don't even think I'm gonna be able to cover all of it the way I want to in a single video without it being way too long. But what I wanna talk about today is Sony announcing and confirming that Spider-Man will in fact be exclusive to PlayStation platforms for Marvel's Avengers, which is incredibly interesting and has created a lot of conversation to say the least. And that's why I wanna start with talking about that. They did officially confirm that a state of play is happening this Thursday on the 6th, and it's gonna be a very long state of play. It's gonna be over 40 minutes, which is insane, but unfortunately, it's not gonna have any significant PlayStation 5 news. That doesn't mean we're not gonna see PlayStation 5 games or at least third-party PlayStation 5 games, but it's a little bit disappointing for some people, so I wanna give my thoughts on that. So this is what we're talking about. Make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification icon. But diving into the first topic, Marvel's Avengers, Spider-Man being exclusive to the PlayStation platform. They tweeted this out. They said, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man comes to Marvel's Avengers exclusively on PlayStation. Crystal Dynamics offers early details on its own unique take on the post-launch hero. Now, what they don't tell you in this post is that it's gonna be coming early 2021. So it's not gonna be there at launch, but it will be a free update for anybody who owns the game on PlayStation, and they do make it clear here that this is not going to be the PS4 version of Spider-Man uh, or past version we've seen. This is gonna be their own take on it. Now, obviously, this is creating a lot of controversy because you have two sides here, okay? You have the side that is complaining about this. It's super anti-consumer. They're crying. They're letting us know that they're not gonna buy the game. They're not gonna support the game because of this, even though they do own a PlayStation, blah, 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 right? It's to be expected. It happens every time. I mean, I understand that this is a multi-platform game, but I simply don't understand what other people don't understand, that this is never going to change. You can cry about it all you want. You can sit here and tell me every single reason why this is anti-consumer and hey, I may agree with some of them, but it's not gonna change. Sony has made it very clear that they believe in exclusivity, even third-party exclusivity like this, although I don't necessarily know if this is fully third-party exclusivity. I mean, yes, the game is third-party, but we know that Sony owns the licensing rights, but I just don't understand why people are so shocked about this. I don't understand why people can't just, instead of complaining at Sony, right? You're gonna complain at them for doing this, even though they're never going to stop doing this. Instead, why don't you take your complaints to other platform holders and tell them, look, if this is a practice that your competition is going to continue to put in place and it's going to continue to work for them, why don't you do something of your own? Go complain to Phil Spencer, go complain to Xbox. They could make something happen. They have the money to do so, but they won't because they're trying to be uh, the nice guy, right? They're trying to be so pro-consumer. Well, you know what? You can be as pro-consumer as you want, but fact of the matter is, Sony's gonna take advantage of that. Your competition is going to take advantage of that. That's exactly what they're doing right here with Spider-Man being exclusive to the PlayStation version of Marvel's Avengers, arguably one of the biggest games that's going to launch this year. Sony just ensured that anybody who was on the fence about where to buy this game, they're going to buy it on PlayStation. And it's a huge selling point. And I can't fault Sony for doing this. It's smart business. This is how you sell games on your platform. This is how you bring people to your platform. You can call it cheap. You can call it playing dirty. Doesn't matter. It's not going to change it. And so you can outcry, you know, on your Twitter posts as much as you want and cry that this is super anti-consumer. My suggestion to you is rather than doing that, 
why don't you go out there and try to get you know pc or xbox as a platform to do something special for their fan base or for their users okay because to sit here and expect that sony's not going to do stuff like this and take advantage of the very clear opportunity they have here that their competition is giving them well you're just a fool in my opinion and you clearly have no idea how business is done and this is business right here sony isn't doing this to spite xbox players they're not doing it to spite PC players. They're doing it to get those players to come to their platform. And if you think for a second that 90% of the sales for this game aren't now going to be on PlayStation, I think you're a little bit delusional. Spider-Man is a huge win for Sony here. And I told you guys how I feel about this. I'm a PlayStation owner. I'm not going to complain. To me, this just seems like my investment continues to pay off. And I am a multi-console owner. And so if there was any chance whatsoever of me playing this on Xbox, Sony just ensured that's not going to happen, right? Now, if I was an Xbox only owner, yeah, I'd be upset. Yeah, I'd be like, wow, I can't believe. Well, honestly, I wouldn't be sitting there saying I can't believe Sony did this. In fact, I'd be sitting there saying, yep, this seems exactly the, like the type of thing Sony would do. And I would probably be scratching my head saying, why haven't I bought a PlayStation yet? <laughs> you know, why haven't I done that? That's what I would be asking myself. So. I know I'm a little bit heated, I know I'm ranting a little bit, and I know that not everybody's going to agree with me, but frankly, I don't care. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm just trying to enlighten you a little bit and let you know that this isn't going to stop, and you can complain as much as you want to Sony. It's just not going to stop. It's business, and it's a smart business move on Sony's part, and my recommendation to you, just like I said in my previous video covering the rumor of this, which clearly turned out to be true, was if you haven't already, go buy a PlayStation. Your investment will certainly be worth it. You know, um, so I just I don't know, man, this is just the, the byproduct of Xbox trying to uproot things, right? Like Microsoft has been so pro consumer, supposedly, right? They've been so pro consumer that now they're making people, uh, you know, question why companies like Sony are continuing to do the things that they've always done that have always worked because suddenly it's anti consumer and it's bad and blah, blah, blah. It is what it is, guys, like just accept it and move on. Or don't accept it and complain into an endless void that is not going to change a thing. So, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, but moving on from that, we need to talk about this state of play. Because this has also caused a little bit of, I don't want to say controversy, but certainly some conversation where Sony has confirmed that this Thursday on August 6th, state of play is returning. So it seems that Robert Serrano, for as much crap as people wanted to give him, he was correct about this. Um, he did say that the date apparently was subject to change, but clearly it didn't. August 6th is the date. And what makes this a little bit interesting is it's not the state of play that maybe most of us were expecting. Now, at first, I was a, kind of upset about this. Like, I was like, are you kidding me, Sony? Like, we are in the beginning of August. We're all aboard the PS5 hype train. What do you mean this is a PlayStation 4 centered state of play? So let me read what they put out here on their blog post. It's been a while, but State of Play returns this Thursday with a focus on third-party published games coming to PS4 and PSVR. We'll have a few PS5 game updates on third-party and indie titles you saw or you last saw in June's PS5 showcase. The episode is weighing in at 40 plus minutes. We've got a great lineup in store featuring plenty of new gameplay footage and other game updates. Can't wait to hear what you think. And just to be super clear, there will be no PlayStation Studios updates in Thursday's episode. There won't be any updates around hardware, business, pre-orders, or dates either. On Thursday, our focus is squarely on showcasing some cool upcoming games coming to the broader PlayStation ecosystem. So yeah, obviously some people are a little bit upset about this, and I won't lie, I was feeling pretty deflated when I first read this, but I have to admit to you guys that it makes complete sense. Um, you know, Microsoft showing certainly didn't put a tremendous amount of pressure on Sony. What's very interesting to me is how long this state of play is going to be 40 plus minutes. That's almost the, you know, same time that, uh, you would expect from an event. And so even though this is PS4 focused, um, it seems like it's going to be third party focused as well. And with that, we will see some updates as they say here on some PS5 titles. I'm thinking maybe Resident Evil 8, maybe Godfall, um, some others that I'm just forgetting about. And so, 
you know, a lot of us were like, oh, well, what about the next God of War? What about Silent Hill? It seems like that's not going to be happening at this event. It seems like if those things are, in fact, going to be revealed, they're going to be revealed a little bit later on. But the big thing here is, well, what about pre-orders? What about pricing? What about availability, right? They make it clear that we're not going to see this at this state of play. And to me, it's kind of obvious that Sony is waiting as long as they possibly can. And I know it's frustrating. I know it can be a little bit annoying because it's like, how long do we really have to wait to learn this information? But you must understand from Sony's perspective, it just it makes a lot more sense for them to try to wait as long as they possibly can so that their competition, that being Microsoft, who is also releasing a next gen console, can put out their price first. And this may be a good thing. This may be another clear sign that maybe Sony is willing to cut the price at the absolute last moment if need be, if they think that that's something they have to do. So it might be a good thing that they're waiting this long for as frustrating as the wait can be. But the big question now is, OK, um, we're going to see this state of play. And it's still, you know, I have to just let you guys know this is smart of Sony because even though we are all aboard the PlayStation 5 hype train that doesn't mean everybody is that doesn't mean the PS4's user base is just going to disappear overnight and go away they're still going to be there and there's still going to be a lot in fact there's going to be more people that don't upgrade within the first couple of months that do uh compared to how many that do right that's just the way it works and that could very well be due to limited availability uh, but there's still going to be millions of people on PS4. So it's very understandable that Sony would choose to do this. It does make a lot of sense. If you were in Sony's shoes, would you really just completely ignore the 110 plus million user base that you have on PS4? No, you don't do that. I don't think anybody would do that. It's just not a rational uh, or logical thing to do. And uh, again, it doesn't mean we're not going to see anything PS5 here. For example, if the next Call of Duty is revealed... That's going to be on PS5. If we do get more info about Resident Evil, that's also going to be on PS5. And we're going to see probably some PS5 indie titles. It is just disappointing to think that we're not going to see an update on Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales, or um, you know Demon Souls or anything like that, or Ratchet and Clank. That will come later. So the big question we're left with is, well, when, when can we expect Sony to talk more about the PS5? When can we expect them to reveal the pricing and the pre-orders? And what about the console teardown? What about, um, you know, all this other stuff? What about the UI? It seems like it's going to be happening a little bit later. And frankly, I would not be surprised at this point if we find out there may even be another state of play before the end of the month. Or if it's not a state of play, it could be maybe the future of gaming part two, something along those lines. It's like a second mini PS5 event, and it might not be mini. I mean, this state of play is gonna be 40 minutes. So it does seem like maybe we could see a second PS5 event before the year's end. And if that doesn't come till September, I'm okay with that. But one thing remains clear and obvious is Sony still has a lot to talk about. They have a lot to reveal and a lot to announce. And so it's gonna have to happen at some point before this console's launch. I'm just not so sure that it's actually going to happen in August now. But if not August, my bet is on early September, not mid-September, not late September, either late August or early September because Sony must know that people are just eager to learn more about their next gen console. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I don't want it to be too long, so let me know your thoughts about all this down in the comments below. Again, I wanna remind you, my merch is up, so go check that out um, for those of you who are interested in it. It's a great way for you to uh, support me directly. Be sure to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, Take care.